وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا أرحم الراحمين والله تيجي صوت لنا في تأس increase us in knowledge and good morals and in good deeds يا رب العالمين so we continue by Allah سبحانه وتعالى's blessings explaining منظومة المقدمة فيما يجب على قاري القرآن أن يعلمه من نظم إمام الحفاظ وحجة القطاء محمد بن محمد بن محمد بن علي بن يوسف ابن الجزري رحمه الله تعالى who was born 751 of the Hijrah and passed away 833 and we are uh, on section 10 العاشر الباب العاشر is أحكام النون الساكنة والتنوين. As you can see here, باب أحكام النون الساكنة والتنوين. The section on the rules of النون الساكنة and التنوين. Imam Ibn Jazari says, رحمه الله تعالى here, وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى إظهار نبغام وقلب إخفى وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى إظهار نبغام وقلب إخفى فعند حرف الحلق أظهر والدغم في اللام والرا لا بغنة لزم وأدغما بغنة في يوم إلا بكلمة كدنيا عنون والقلب عند الباب غنة كذا لدى كذا لخفى لدى باقي الحروف أخذا. Four lines he summarized رحمه الله تعالى summarized the rules of noon ساكنة and تنوين. بسم الله we start with the first line وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى إظهار ندغام وقلب إخفى. First of all let me help you get and be familiar with the line. Repeat with me. We're going to do it line, uh, half by half. وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى. Yalla, all of you, unmute yourself and repeat. وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى. وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى. Yeah, وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى. Wow. Yalla ya Umar, yalla ya Ala. Everybody at the same time. Idharu nidghamun. See how we read this? Idharu nid, idharu nidghamun wa qalbun ikhfa. Yalla guys, idharu nidghamun wa qalbun ikhfa. Idharu nidghamun wa qalbun ikhfa. Aywa. وحكم تنوين ونون يلفى إظهار ندغام وقلب إخفى. anyone can try who can try وحكم تنوين ونون ونون يلفى إظهار ند ندغام وقلب إخفى. بارك الله فيك. just إظهار you make the ضاء heavy إظهار not إظهار 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 just the ضاء إظهار who else? Omar, can you read the Omar? Omar Farooq, you're here. Ala, can you read? Um, okay. وحكم التنوين ونون يلفى إظهار نب إظهار نبغام وقلب إخفى إظهار نبغام Look, so you can see my screen? Yeah. You're saying nib or nid? It's nib, right? Because with the noon, make it bad? No. Exactly. And we're going to explain that now, inshallah. Okay, 
بارك الله فيكم بسم الله let's first learn the meanings of those of those words let's learn the meanings وحكم حكم the حكم means the ruling right the حكم means the ruling we have حكم عقلي we have a rational ruling we have حكم عادي usual or customary or habitual ruling we have حكم شرعي شرعي islamic legal ruling so الحكم إثبات أمر لأمر أو نفيه عنه حكم is to confirm okay something to something the relationship or you attribute something to something for example when you say this is haram so you attributing the hurma or the tahreem or the uh, prohibition to something that's called hukum when you say for example this world is hadith is contingent this is hukum haqli means you're attributing contingency to this world means what this world must have come after it wasn't means it's not eternal why because it's a changing okay because it is changing so it must it must have come after it wasn't and this is this proves that that there must be someone who brought it into existence which is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so hukum that's hukum uh, here he's saying hukum hukmu tanween the rule of tanween the rule of tanween so hukum is rule or ruling uh, in in sharia in the islamic law we have five types of ahkam or rules anything in our life anything in the world it must come under one of these five rulings in sharia in the islamic law okay in the hanafi school they made it seven anyone knows what those five rules are any word you say and any action you do it must come under one of those five rules in sharia in the islamic law anyone knows what those five rules are Those, call, those are called al-ahkam, al-ahkam al-shari'iyya, al-ahkam al-taklifiyya. No one knows? Okay. The first, the first rule is al-wajib, al-wajib or al-fard, what is mandatory, like salah, like zakah, right? And the second is what is preferable, mustahab, or sunnah or mandub, they all come under one category in general. And the third is the mubah, something permissible. And the fourth is makruh, which is disliked. And the fifth is haram, forbidden. Tamam? Anything in your life, any word you say or any action you take, it must come under one of these five rulings. It might, it will either be farud, mandatory to do it, or preferable to do it, or permissible to do it, or dislike to do it, or forbidden to do it. Right, yeah, Ahmed? How many rules are those, the main shari rules? Five. What are they? Can you repeat? The one that is the, the one that is permissible. Uh-huh. One is like is recommended. Uh-huh. Right. One is what called like, that is like okay to do. Okay. The one, the, one, the, one, the one is makruh. Okay. The one is haram. Right. And forbidden and mandatory. Okay. Barakallah fiqh. Omar, Omar Farooq. Uh, Omar Farooq, you're here? Yeah. Can you repeat those five rules? No. Why not? Yeah. Ahmed repeated them. I know. Okay. Okay. I'm going to come back to you. Who can repeat those five rules, sisters? Yeah. Yalla, this is like ABC for you as students of knowledge, huh? You are students of knowledge. This should be like ABC for you. Yalla, guys. No one? Come on. Really? Really? Uh, fard, uh -huh. mustahab, uh -huh. makruh, wa uh -huh. haram. And, and I forgot. And mubah, okay. Mubah, okay. Who else? So I'm going to repeat them one last time. What is mandatory? Fard. 
what is preferable, sunnah or mustahab, what is permissible, mubah, what is disliked, makruh, what is forbidden, haram. Yalla Omar, Omar Farooq. What were three and four? I didn't hear you. Three and four? What yeah. is preferable? What is disliked? What is permissible? What is forbidden? And what is mandatory? Yalla. I forgot. <laughs> the first one was um what is needed. You don't have to you don't have to say the to say them in order. If you were paying attention and you just understood, you can you can say them because they're opposites. They're opposites. Okay, what you have to do, mandatory, right. and what you must not do, forbidden. Between them in the middle is permissible. You can do, you can leave. And there's something preferable you're you're recommended to do, and something you're disliked to do, you're discouraged to do. Okay, got them? Yeah. Tell me, Yel. And what is needed to do is fard. Uh huh. What is preferable to do is sunnah. Good. What is forbidden is haram. Mm -hmm. And what permissible, is... that's called mubah. What is permissible? And disliked means what? Makru. Now, the, in the Hanafi school, they add two. The fard, what you have to do, not the fard, what you have to do in the Hanafi school, it has two subcategories, fard and wajib. Fard and wajib. Of course, every school has its proofs. And the makruh in the Hanafi school, also it has two subcategories, makruh tanzihan and makruh tahriman. Okay? Or, so... Or you can say the haram for them is two types. Uh, what is absolutely haram and what is makruh tahriman. And you have to avoid both of them. And there are details and differences about them. Okay. Uh, so these, these, these are things you have to uh, keep in mind. Anything you do, you have to think before you do it or you say it. Is this permissible? Is this haram? Is this preferable? Is this makruh, etc. Anyway. That's just off the topic, just to make you aware of something important. وَحُكْمُ تَنْوِينٍ The rule of تَنْوِينٍ وَنُونٍ and نُون يُلْفَى يُلْفَى means يُوجَد يُلْفَى means يُوجَد In the Quran, we have a word similar to that. Who knows? Surah Al-Baqarah وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّبِعُ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا أَلْفَيْنَا when it is said to them, follow what Allah has revealed, they say, we follow what we found our forefathers doing. Ma alfayna means wajadna, yulfa yujad. So it means exists or there is. So the rule of tanween and noon, yulfa means it exists or there is. Ivharun. So here there is something implied. I'm going to come back, but I'm going to give you now the, the rough meanings. Ivharun, which means what? Clarification. Ivharun. Uh, idghamun, which means merging, of course. Qalbun, which means it's changing. Ikhfa means hiding. And he said ikhfa. He didn't say ikhfa. So that it suits the rhythm of the line. And this is the narration or the Qira'a of Imam Hamza and Imam uh, and, and uh, the narration of Imam Hisham from Ibn Amir. They drop the Hamza sometimes at the end of some words. Okay? So he used that narration to fit the rhythm. Uh, Why he said This is something we learned before. Uh, who remember? What is that called? And where did we explain that before? Hmm? We mentioned that before in Jazariya many times. What is that called? Meeting of two seconds. No, that, that's different. Is it in the section of Baad? What is it? Um, it's obvious. It's clear. He, this is called Naqlul Haraka. Naqlul Haraka. This word, Idram, there are no, no two consecutive sukuns here, Sister uh, uh, Nazreen, because this Hamza is not Hamza Tawassal. If it is Hamza Tawassal, then you're right. This is mm -hmm. Hamza Qata, not Hamza Tawassal, mm -hmm. guys. 
The word is adrama yudrimu idraman. Is hamzat qata. In warsh narration, Imam warsh narration, what does he do? Qul a'udhu. Qul a'udhu. This is hamzat qata. This is hamzat qata. Qul. What does he do? He moves the haraka of the Hamza to, to the second letter before it and drops the Hamza. So how does it become? Qula uudhu. Qula uudhu. See how he reads it? Qula uudhu. Okay, guys. That's called naqlu harakati al-hamza ila al-sakin qablaha. That's for takhfif. To make it easier, that's how some Arab tribes do. So in essence of saying, قُلْ أَعُوذُ He says, قُلْ أَعُوذُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ Another example, close to this example here, is مَتَاعٌ إِلَى مَتَاعٌ إِلَى This is exactly like this example that we have here. مَتَاعٌ إِلَى So here we have what? We have Hamzat Qatar. With a kasra. We'll talk about Hamzat Qatar. Mata'un, obviously, the tanween is a noon sakina in a pronunciation, right? So, what do we have? Noon sakina. We have a sakin letter and we have Hamza. Hamzat Qatar. Move the haraka of the Hamza to the sakin letter before it, which is the noon. So, how does it become? How does it become? Who can read it? Huh? U Nila Nila Mata Unila Heen Mata Unila Ivha Ru Ru Nid Ivha Ru Nid Same thing Change the noon This noon Ya Allah is the Tanween Okay So we change that Sukun of the noon into a Kasra Ivha Ru Nid This is how it should be written Ivha Ru Nid Ramun Clear? Hala, is that clear? Yeah. So that's how, why he, he made it this way, to fit the rhythm, also to fit the rhythm, to fit the rhythm of the line. Okay. Okay. Now, we come to the explanation of this line. The rule of tanween and noon exists yulfa okay ivhar exists ivhar it doesn't make sense so there must be something implied here what is it exists after the alphabet letters in four categories which are ivharun idramun qalbun ikhfaun okay so we have something implied here of course in poetry the writers they tend to some to make it short. So yulfa means yujadu, yujadu in the huruf al hijai mahsuran fi arbaati aqsam. It exists at the Arabic letters in four categories or four rules, which are ibhar, idram, qalb, ikhfa. Okay. So let's take tanween. What is tanween? Anyone can tell me the definition of tanween? We mentioned this before, guys, and you got tested in it, most of you. Yalla, what is the def definition of tanween? What is the tanween? Don't tell me two fathat, two dhammat, two kasrat. Right? That's, that's not a definition. What's the definition of tanween? Yalla. Um, it's a noon sakina. Um, uh -huh. It's a noon, noon sakina. The tanween is a noon sakina. Hmm? So it's it's shown um, it's not shown in writing but pronounced orally, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and then it it's it comes at the end of the nouns and it's uh, dropped when we are stopping. Exactly, that's the definition of tanween. A tanween noon on sakina ton tetbau akhir lismi lafzan wa tufariquhu khattan wa waqfan. Is a noon sakina that comes at the end of some nouns in pronunciation. It is a noon sakina in pronunciation, but in writing and in waqf, it departs the noun. Is that clear? 
So what do what what do we mean by that? Of course, when you have ban or bun or bin, what am I pronouncing? Yeah, Ahmed. When I say ban, what is the last sound you can hear? When I say ban, means tenwin. Uh, huh? Tenwin. What's the sound you can hear when I say ban? Huh? Mm -hmm. The sound of what letter? Noon sakin. Exactly. Noon sakina. Same thing, bun. Same thing, bin, right? So that's why we say that tenween is a noon sakina in pronunciation. Tamam? And in writing, it's not noon sakina. We write it as we, we represent it by what? By the second haraka, by a double haraka, okay? By the second haraka. Okay, that is why, guys, and that's one of the questions I'm going to ask you, okay? And that's one of the questions that I'm going to ask you. The section 10 test. Where is it? The section 10 test. I'm going to ask you this question, inshallah. Which is what? Why is, why the rules of Nun Sakina and Tanween? Why the rules of Nun Sakin and Tanween are the same? Why? You have to say, because the Tanween is a Nun Sakin in pronunciation. Right? The Tanween is a Nun Sakin in pronunciation. And in the Quran, that's the rest of the answer. In the Quran recitation, we deal with sounds. So since these two things, they sound the same, this means they have to have the same rules. Got it? And another thing, another thing, the rules of Nun Sakina and Tanween, for example, we say Rahimun, 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 Wadud. Or we have Man Yu'min. Focus with me on this point. Man Yu'min. Do we apply the rules of Nun Sakina and Tanween when we stop? Do we apply them when we stop? If we say Rahimun and we want to stop, do we apply the rule? Of course not. If we say Man and we don't connect it with Yu'min, do we apply? Of course not. So since we can we apply the rules of Nun Sakina in connection, in connection. And since the nun sak the tanween has the same sound as the nun sakina, they have the same rules. Why we say why we added this in connection? Because if we stop on the word with tanween, the tanween is gone, right? So that's why the rules of nun sakina and tanween are the same. So hukmu tanween and wanunin. So he, here also said حُكْمُ تَنْوِينْ وَنُونٍ وَنُونٍ Any noon? Of course not. Noon sakina. So also it's implied. Noon sakina. Why sakina? Because the tanween is a noon sakina. So here talking about the noon sakina. Since they have the same rules, he's talking about the noon sakina. Tamam? So yulfa, we said yujad. A yujad and the nijah. Ibhar and dhamun, we said that. Ikhfa, we said that. So tanween. Is a nun sakina that comes at the end of, of nouns in pronunciation, not in writing, and it departs them in the state of waqf. Since in reciting the Quran, we are dealing with sounds, and since, and since they, these rules are applied during wasl, the rules of nun sakina and tanween are the same. That's the question, guys, huh? And here's the answer. So the question is why the rules of noon, sakina, and tanween are the same? That's a test question, okay? Now, when we have noon, sakina, or tanween, when we have noon, sakina, or tanween, we should look at the letter after them to determine how to pronounce the nun sakina or tanween. There are four rules regarding nun sakina and tanween. Line 66, so that was line 65. The first line was line 65.
now line 66. Any questions so far? Any question, guys? Okay. So, وحكم تنوين ونين ونوني يلفى إظهار نظام وقلب إخفى وحكم تنوين ونوني يلفى إظهار نظام وقلب إخفى فعند حرف الحلق أظهر فعند حرف الحلق أظهر والدغم في اللام والراء لا بغنة اللزم فعند حرف الحلق أظهر والدغم في اللام والراء لا بغنة اللزم فعند فا who knows what does this fa mean? Huh? Fa. Fa means what? Fa means what? Then, okay, it's like a conjunction, right? It's a conjunction. So, so it means then, right? Or so, etc. Fa'inda. Inda. What does عند mean? At. عند at. Okay. At could be could mean also with. So فعند حرف الحلق أظهر. At حرف الحلق. حرف الحلق means the throat letters. حرف الحلق means the letter that comes from the throat, right? حرف حرف الحلق means what? The throat letters. He said حرف حرف to mean any letter that comes from الحلق. Okay? عند حرف الحلق. أظهر أظهر means what? أظهر is a command, right? Means show, clarify. أظهر. فعند حرف الحلق أظهر. عند حرف الحلق أظهر Any question guys فعند حرف الحلق أظهر أظهر what أظهر is a command فعل أمر مبني على السكون أظهر what that's that's done this sentence is over at the حلق letter show or clarify Clarify what? Show what? Nun-sakina. Show the nun-sakina or tanween. Mm -hmm. Where we got that? Ivhar. He said Ivharun, right? Adhir, Ivhar. Adhara, Ivharan. So Adhir, show. And the harf al-halqi, Adhir. So show the nun-sakina or tanween at the halq letters. That's the first rule. So first he told you, there are four rules. Those are the four rules. Ivhar, idgham, qalb, ikhfa. Now, here, he's going to explain to you when you make a because he said, yulfa, yujad, at the Arabic letters in four categories. These are the four categories. Now, which is which? When is idhar? When is idgham? When is... So he started explaining them to you line by line or rule by rule. So he started with ivhar. At the halak letters, or the throat letters, show, means show the notes like in our term, clarify it. How we do that, that's what we're going to explain. Adhir. Waddaghim. Waddaghim. Iddaghim, like adhim. So iddaghim means what? Adhim. Iddaghim. Another form of the verb, okay? Iddaghim means adhim. Adhim. And adhim means what? Merge, right? Merge or assimilate, right? Merging, assimilating. Adhim. Waddaghim or wa adhim. Adhim what? Fillami. In the lamb or into the lamb. So here fi means into. Okay, fi means here into. So here fi, I'm giving you the meaning in the in the line particularly into, into the lamb and the ra. Why he said ra, not ra, ya Ahmed? Do you know why he didn't say ra? He said ra. Huh? Do you know? Yeah, I know. 
to, to suit the rhythm of the line, right? To suit the rhythm. Warra, he dropped the Hamza. That's another way of recitation, which is the way of Hisham and, and Hamza. Warra. So, ad waddagim or adgim fillami warra. And merge into the lam and the ra. Merge what? Where is the maf'ul bihi? Where is the object? What is the thing that I have to merge? So, waddagim huma. Means waddagim huma. Means merge them. So, adhir, adhir, the noon sakin and tanween. Waddagim, addagim, the noon sakin and tanween, right? So, waddagim means waddagim huma. Waddagim, waddagim huma, okay? Waddagim, waddagim huma. Merge them. Merge what? Merge the nun sakin or tanween. Where? In what? Into the lam and the ra. La bi ghunnatin. Not with ghunna. Not with ghunnatin. Lazim. Lazim means this idram is necessary. This idram is necessary. You should, you have to merge them. Merge the nun sakin or tanween into the lam or the ra without ghunna. That's necessary. What is lazim? What is necessary? Could be the idram. He means the idram is necessary and it is necessary. And could mean without ghunna. Without ghunna. The idram without ghunna is necessary. Yes, in Hafs narration through Shatibiyah, it is necessary to make it without ghunna. But in some qira'at, in the lam and the ra'at, they make idram with ghunna. But not Hafs through Shatibiyah, okay? Not Hafs through Shatibiyah. So instead of saying, Near Rabbika, they say Near Rabbika, Near Rabbika, okay, Mella home, they say Mella, Mella, okay. So that is the rough meaning of the line. So we come now, we can come to the Ibhar. So, Lazim, I Lazima, necessary, mandatory, Lazima Bila Ghunna means it's necessary without to do it without Ghunna, or this means the Idram is necessary in all words, okay, in all words. And without ghunna means in the shatibiyya way. Okay, bismillah. So we start with the izhar. The rules of noon sakina and tanween. Remember the tanween is a noon sakina in pronunciation, not in writing. That comes at the end of nouns and it departs them in state of waqf. That's what we said before. Since in reciting the Holy Quran, we are dealing with sound, the rules of noon sakina and tanween. Okay, we mentioned that. When we have no second or, ten, or ten we should look at the letter after them to determine how to pronounce the no second or ten we. There are four rules regarding the no second or ten we. We said that. So we start with al ibhar Not al qalb al ibhar So let's take al ibhar from here. So al ibhar literally, who knows what it means? We said that. Clarification. Right? Or just showing, to show. Azhara, he showed. Okay? So al ibhar is clarification. Al ibhar is clarification, to show. That is the literal meaning. That is the literal meaning of al ibhar. In the tajweed terminology, anyone can give me the definition of ibhar in tajweed? What do we have to do? When we have no sakin or tanween followed by one of the halak letters, what do I have to do exactly? Who can tell me the definition? Who can tell me the definition? Anyone? Read the noon sakin and, noon sakin and tanween clearly. Okay, that's half. Good. To pronounce ivhar of the noon sakin or tanween, to pronounce the noon sakin or tanween clearly. That's ibhar, clarification, clearly. And distinctly from the ibhar letter, distinctly. You don't merge them, you don't hide, you don't merge the noon, you don't hide it. You clearly and distinctly, you make it distinct from the ibhar letter without extra ghunna, without any extra ghunna. Yalla, that's another question. Why? This is a test question, huh? Why? In Ivhar, huh? why 
in Ibhar, we say without extra gunna. Yalla, guys, easy question. Why we didn't say without gunna? Huh? Because the noon sakina. Sakina and the termin has. Uh, and and we in it. always have gunna, right? Which is what type of gunna? A short gunna in the case of in the case of ibhar, right? In the case of ibhar, it's a short gunna. Is that clear, guys? That's another test question. So, al ibhar is pronouncing the noon sakin or tamini completely, completely, clearly, and distinctly from the following ibhar letter without adding any extra gunna. So, we say, an-amta, an-an-ha, an-a. See, I'm pronouncing the noon sakina, I'm pronouncing the noon sakina, and then the ibhar letter, a. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying right pronounce the noon sakina or tanween clearly completely clearly and distinctly from the ibhar letter without extra gunna an'amta sami'un alim sami'un alim that's it that is al ibhar because the one second at mean always okay. This means we pronounce the one second at mean with their normal short gunna. Then we pronounce the following ibhar letter. We apply the ibhar or al ibhar when the one second at mean is followed by what? One of the six throat letters. Hamza ha, ain ha, ain ha. We don't before right. ثم لأقص الحلق. We learned that in the Makharij, we learned that Halq letters. ثم لأقص الحلق همز ها ومن وسطه فعين ها أدناه غين خاء ها. So these letters are called the throat letters since they come from the throat. Since the makhraj of these letters. Now, why we make ilhar? Why we don't merge the noon sakin or tanween into the, the ilhar letter? Or we don't make ikhfa, right? The main, the basic answer is because this is how we got it from our sheikhs back to the Prophet And as an analysis, because it's easier to do ilhar no need to do idram. When do we do idram? We do idram when the letters are like close to each other. And we do ikhfa almost like when they're close relatively, right? Uh, because in ibhar, the letters are far from the makhraj of the noon, it's easy to pronounce them distinctly from each other and no need to apply idram or ikhfa at them. Tamam? Let's read the example. Uh, look, all the throat letters are here in the throat. All the ibhar letters are here. And the noon, you know, it's here. And you touch the gum with the front part of the tongue, right? So from here to here, no need to merge them, right? So they're, they're not difficult. They're not like close to the extent like you need to merge them, right? So kufu one, one, a, kufu one, a, had. وَهُمْ يَنْهَوْنَ يَنْهَوْنَ Notice that إِظْهَار happens in one word or two words. Two words like here or in one word like here. It applies in both cases. كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ وَهُمْ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ وَيَنْأَوْنَ عَنْهُ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرُ وَأَمَّا مَنْ آمَنْ لكل قوم هاد أنعمت إن عليك حكيم عليم 